I've always wanted a claw machine. I mean, who wouldn't want a claw machine in their own home? So, when the opportunity knocked, I, uh, I wasted no time and I absolutely, absolutely said yes. I would love to have that old claw machine. I actually did pay money for this. It wasn't much, but the guy offered it to me for free and I had no way of getting it to my house. So I basically paid for delivery. It was uh, originally owned by a company that does uh, music, cigarettes, claw machines, candy cranes, um, arcade games, um, a lot of the vintage arcade games, uh, poker machines, those little tabletop poker machines. A friend of my coworkers owns the company and he's starting to wind down his business and um, I think he's planning on retiring at some point soon. And uh, he just had all kinds of old machines lying around his barn. And when I say barn, I mean barn. An 1870s gothic-style wood-framed barn. <laughs> um, beautiful building. Anyway, so he had this machine. I went over there to, to check it out, see what he had, and because um, I wanted to get some kind of an arcade machine for my house. And uh, this is what he had. Um, and I saw it, and I saw how narrow it was. And it won't take up a lot of space in my house. So I said, sure, I would love to take that off your hands. And let's take a look inside here. Um, this thing has been sitting in a barn for what could be years. I don't know what's wrong with it, and neither does he. Yeah, all he knows is it doesn't run. So... <sighs> Now we're actually inside the claw machine, and I, I couldn't find any videos online of what exactly do these look like on the inside. Well, now you know. This is the control board. These are the dip switches that you adjust when you want to um, improve or <laughs> reduce the, um, the odds of winning in your game. So yes, these are 100% rigged. Looks like there's a surge protector in there that was mounted to the wall. This is the power supply, the main step-down transformer. Um, we have, right here, we have a coin box. And this game did have locks when I looked at it, but he took them out. I'll have to get those back because they have all the right tail pieces I need to get new locks put in. Well, anyway, anyway plywood construction. I thought it would be particle board, but it's not. It's plywood, which is good because it's uh, more resistant to moisture. It looks like this door is particle board, though. Yeah, that's particle board to if I ever saw it. It does have some cosmetic wear. This door is... I don't know if it's supposed to be bent like that or not. I, I, I would think it was... it was supposed to be... it should be straight, but... What do I know? Yeah, I'm it's hard to turn off if that's supposed to be that way or not. The only the only purpose of this door is so that you can't steal prizes. So, who knows? No, I think it's bent in the right position. Looks like there's a fan back there. Let's get inside. So this thing could quite literally have anything wrong with it or for that matter, anything living in it. Uh, oh no, that's where the speaker is. This one has sound. Cool. You can see that. All right, so this is a Betson Big Choice. That's the manufacturer and model. Uh, so this was owned by Seacoast Amusements. That's the uh, product label. Oh, shit. 
It actually has the original purchasing company. Now, Seacoast Amusements isn't who sold it to me. He bought it from that company for parts, I think. Let's see. The electronics are all intact. I'm trying to find like a year of manufacture or anything like that. But, uh, relay, motor fuse, logic fuse. Outlet strip. I can remount that. That's definitely 80s. We've got most of the uh, configuration information and some pinouts. Test procedure. Push game board test button once. Test switches in the game over mode display. Mode only. Stack switches will make a beep. Tone and switch number will be displayed at the credit. <clears throat> so we've got some preliminary diagnostic stuff, and here is all the dip switch information. Now this door opens up. I'm going to have to wheel it a little further into the living room so that I can clear the ceiling. Okay. Turns out the prop rod is still there. Thank God. Focus. There. So here's the prize chute. Definitely needs a good cleaning, and I'm going to... What's this? Beach mat with pillow. Sweet. Christmas gift for somebody. $9.99. <laughs> I give that to my sister. Merry Christmas. We've got some Corona light... Uh, Table. Hey, I know who I can give those to. <laughs> there we go. Do my Christmas shopping in my own crane machine. How freaking cheap is that? I know who would love those. Um, let's see what else is in here. This is a cap or something. This is what they put in for flooring. You know what's funny? And this is so ironic. This is all coming out, by the way. Check it out. It's the exact same tile <laughs> as my kitchen. It really is, actually. My tile looks different because it's been polished so many times, but look at that. It's, it's my kitchen floor right there. So my plan is to replace all that crap with some arcade-type uh, carpeting. And uh, that's what's going to happen. She got this tube broke. That's all right. A simple piece of PVC pipe will, will replace that just fine. Oh my god, this thing reeks. It's like it's been in a barn for so long. 50 cents per play. So it, it's currently obviously rigged for a 50 cent play. Um, you can actually I look through the manual and you can change it for free play or I gotta plug this in. You gotta see what it does. Um, here's the crane unit up close. A lot of motors and stuff in there. Um, a lot of mold too. It's a little upsetting. But... And we don't really know what the problem is. Could be a fried motor for all I know. Let's try to get it to its home position. Plug it in. Oh, here's this thing. Oh boy. <laughs> That's in rough shape. I think the coating on it is you know, messed up. But that's A-OK. -okay. All right. Plug it in. Here's an outlet. It could smoke, it could catch fire, who knows. Or all of the above. It's counting down. A 
The lights are um, knackered. This all means something. Yeah. Take a look at these coin necks while we're waiting for it to fail or do something. Um, hmm. Those lights are burned out. Look at this. It's like mold. This all be this is all cleanable. I'm not worried about it. I can clean all that up. No problem. A little bit of WD forty, some steel will take care of it all. Now where is the um, do I even have a key to that? <laughs> I don't think I do. Darn it. Um, they, these keys actually go to the old uh, lock for the glass. Unfortunately, that has uh, it's long gone. So um, that lock actually fell apart when I uh, when I brought it home. I mean, uh, when I first looked at it, I can fix those hinges real quick, get them tightened up so the door doesn't sag. Yeah, I don't have the key to this lock. I don't know if I need it or not. That's to reset the counter, I think. After removing this cover here, I found that the crane, uh, the, the claw string has been wrapped around like so, which is not the way it's supposed to be at all. No, that would be very bad. So I'm gonna try to just start by unwinding the claw by turning the motor manually. Um, there you go, I think I got it moving. Sorta. Of. No, no, not quite. Uh, I gotta take this glass panel off. So here is the crane, I believe this is the car, and uh, that's called the trolley. And it is jammed up. So, if there was something else wrong with this machine, I don't know yet, but I do know that this is a problem. The entire cord is raveled, and uh, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it straightened out. So, yeah. Well, I uh, think I might have found the problem. The motor fuse is burned out. And that might have been because of the, um, <clears throat> it could have been as a result of the, uh, <clears throat> overwound, which I'm a jigger. That fuse got hot. Really hot. Now, yeah, there's the break. So I gotta find another fuse. I don't have any. What is this thing? 250 volts. Four amp. What do I have that might have a fuse like that? The logic fuse. My freaking phone's ringing, damn it! So I've taken the fuse out of the lamp circuit and put it in the motor circuit. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I think I took the logic fuse out. No, I didn't. I was going to, and then my phone rang. Let's see what happens. Some light. <laughs> Sweet! 
Interesting how the lamps all came on too. Oh, that's freaking awesome. So it homed itself and everything. Let's put a quarter in. It didn't give it the credit though. Oh wait, it's 50 cents per play. Ah, here we go. Okay, that's where the limit switches might be bad. Alright, so now what we gotta do is check the continuity of all those switches. It's, um, it's trying to rehome itself. But the motors all seem to work okay. And it's, ah. This one. I'll have to take a multimeter to that one. Then you've got this one here. Let's try this again, but this time we're going to put the, the cover on so that the. Uh, that's good. That means we've got solid logics, which was my number one concern. Um, I was really worried about that. So, um, so, let's look at this cover out of the way. Uh, somehow. Somehow, wait, I gotta get this cover out of the way. Right. That's what caused the uh, motor fuse to likely blow. Um, without a doubt. And, um, let's try this again. This time we're going to plug it in. Alright. Okay. I know which motor is going freaking batty. There it goes. It timed out or the fuse blew. T1. The fuse blew. <laughs> um, let's check that theory. Now T3 is the error I was getting. Oh, the fuse didn't blow. Alright. Shortened the cord by that much. And that reduces the amount of coil overlap, I'm hoping. All right, now let's uh, put a token in. The seconds counter ain't working so good. Go for the knife. No, I'm gonna go for the pom-pom thing. I gotta lubricate some stuff. Okay, here's what happened. It uh, lost the contact with the. Damn it! All right, try again. Or now it timed out. T3. Okay, may have blown the fuse. We'll, uh, we'll uh, try it anyway, just just to be sure. I can't believe I could be so stupid. It just finally hit me. I had it hooked up wrong. I had the, and it was, I think it was like this from the get-go, like it was wrong. This is how it's supposed to be hooked up. The, all right, here's how it works. When it does its initial calibration, it sees that this lever is down, which means that the claw is either under tension, I mean, uh, not tensioned, or all the way down. So what it does is it picks it up, starts to reel it in, and the switch locks, okay? 
right? So it goes under tension. And then when it fully releases, here, let's power it up and see what happens. I could be wrong. I could be dead wrong. All right. Let's see what it does. And then when it lifts, Ha I got it. So, when it lifts all the way, it hits this switch. I had it all messed up. Now, now, let's put our little stuffed animal of science back in there. Oh, this thing is so dirty. All right, let's put him in there. Give myself, oh, I don't know. One, there, takes the credit, machine's loaded up. Give myself four credits. Ow! Why do you hate me so? <clears throat> Alright. Back to the drawing board. I didn't hit that button. Did I? That time it worked as it's supposed to. Oh, and I think I figured out what's hitting when it's moving the pulley, so I gotta fix that. That should be dead simple. Can y'all see that? Like a pro. Credits now. Here we go. So far, ah, look, 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 look. Damn thing got stuck. I gotta fix that now. The um, the crane hoist up. Oh, my it was my second play. I want to see what the timer is set to. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna let it just hover over here for a minute. And we're going to see it do it on its own. I'm sure there's a countdown timer set. I haven't really looked at the, um... <laughs> what a joke. There it goes. Can this thing not lose? Try that again. Uh, let's put it in a more livable spot. So far, I've won twice in a row, which should be wrong. It will trigger the give myself one credit in here. Now I'm going to show you what that noise is, and I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to fix that. Look carefully at this pulley. Look at that. It's hitting that bolt, and then it's getting wrapped up like that. So, all right, <laughs> it's like set for instant win. So I had this thing working just fine. Then all of a sudden, the fuse blew again. So, <laughs> I had to do what I had to do. I had another fuse that I found. It was a little bit higher uh, amperage, but I figured, you know what? What the heck? I was thinking that maybe the fuse blew because it was underrated. Um, like a 1 or 2 amp and it wasn't enough. Who knows? I don't know. 
Oops. So I put in a, a bigger fuse. That's all I had. Power the machine up. Bam! Smoke. <laughs> so, um, again, you know, sometimes we we do things that we regret later on, and I regret using that fuse. But I had to do what I had to do. And unfortunately, I did some damage. Yes, I did. I did some damage. Although, it doesn't appear serious. Honestly. The, um, so here's the relay board fuse. And here's what happened. I burned a tracer. Um, I then figured out, I'm going to fix that. I think it'll come up. I really do. I, I'm optimistic. I think that was the only thing I damaged. Uh, luckily, I wasn't really in the logic side of the board. It was more in the motor controller side, which is pretty robust. So, I'll show you what happened. After that happened, I'm like, oh crap, there's a problem. Sure enough, after I would, had finished putting this back together, this coil of reinforcement wire, look at what happened. I don't know if you can see that. But it was actually bent in a way that caused it to touch this terminal on the motor. So as soon as power was applied, there you go, instant short. So I'm going to take a trip to the local Walmart, and by local, I mean 30 minutes away. <laughs> I'm going to grab a couple of fuses. Now, does this give me the actual rating? No. <laughs> I don't have the manual. I can't find a service manual, so I'm going to have to... Actually, no, I know for a fact that that was a 4 amp, 250 volt fuse. Um, now, Something tells me that this board might be a refurbished board. That label looks a little bit too new. I did, I've determined when this machine was actually manufactured. Um, it was manufactured in 1988. Um, and in fact, I found a very close possible um, actual date of manufacture underneath the joystick control panel which I will not show you. So I fixed these hinges. So now that opens nicely. And here we go. Look at this here. 2588 New England coin. Now that could be just when this machine was uh, outfitted. Or that could be, um, who knows? That could be the dealer. I think New England coin might be the dealer. I'm going to take all this off. If I ever get this thing working again, I'm going to replace all that. I think I can find a product that'll work. So, i got to solder that back together. Hopefully I have another fuse. Aye, aye, aye. So, I've repaired the land. And I believe that was the sacrificial lamb in this uh, particular instance. I got lucky, I think. Uh, of course, I don't know yet. So it looks like um, that actually goes out to here. It actually, yeah, there we go. That um, shoots up to the top surface to this piece. And then it goes to this 500 volt ceramic capacitor. And from the other direction, coming from the fuse, let's see here, I'm trying to figure out the block diagram here. It, at some point, it hits this um, 25 ohm. 27 ohm ceramic resistor. <sighs> okay, so we're going to put the board back in. I'm going to get the right fuse. 
I'm going to go to Walmart and pick one up. We're going to put it back together again and see what happens. It, uh, the carriage, actually the trolley and the car have homed upon first try. Okay, I've got three credits. That counter doesn't work. But who's counting, right? Oh, Alright, there's a problem. There it goes. The uh, switch on the claw The switch gets stuck, and that's what's happening here. The switch needs to be put out of its misery. There it goes. So now if I restart it, now it, it errors out. I've got to restart the machine. go oh wait I have to now I have to put the claw back together Arr. I'm trying to take up some of the slack in this coiled cable this probably should be replaced it's very played out um, trying to rewind it and kind of kink it would be nearly impossible But it was getting caught in everything, and I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Still going to get caught, if, no matter what I do. Um, so yeah, that should be replaced. It can't coil back up on its own anymore. Okay, I just put $1.50 in there. Button works, claw works. Didn't jump off this time. Why does it do that? Oh, that's right, the button. I gotta, yeah, I gotta replace that button. See, button stuck again. At least you know it works. That's half the battle. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I can just buy that button, honestly. Hear that? Oh, ha! Huh. I think I know why. It was getting hit by the coin mech. Yeah, let's give that a try. All right. And that's why it was dropping by the prize gate. All axes with the gonna jump the track. Woohoo! Okay. Now it's ready for my second play. Here we go. We got a prize again. Oh, I did it again. It got stuck. Uh, I've got some fun to have here. Son of a... Now watch what happens. It's not... What did I determine was causing that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Alright. That's it. Okay. All right. Not sure what's causing it to jump off. Actually, I did determine the cause, but 
I think I solved that, or I thought I did. So let's try this one last time. Camera's eye view. Bird's eye view, I guess. I am going to change some settings. That'll be in another video. We're going to play with the, uh, the odd thing. See, that was a, that was a misfire. You son of a... I'm starting to wonder if there's a problem with the trolley cable. That's a very possible issue. Um, there could be a short or something in here. Um, now this time, it raveled up like it's supposed to, but it wouldn't shut off when it was supposed to. This uh, switch was supposed to trigger the, uh, the off sensor and it didn't. So there could be a fault in this switch between here and here. We're going to now test that with a multimeter. So here is what we know. Here is, uh, this is, this is the long and short of it. Figured out how these reed switches actually work. And I think I know what the problem is, or roughly what the problem is. One of the many problems. What it's doing, all right, if the claw comes, all right, here's how it works. When you trigger the claw to come down, what happens is right now the claw is weighted, which means that this switch is in the up position. When the claw down button is hit, the motor, the motor runs in the direction that sends the claw downward. When the claw hits something, the floor, this plexiglass, what it may, whatever that may, whatever, the prize, when the claw hits something, the weight is taken off and this switch goes down and it tells the computer that the claw has reached the bottom. If that switch does not work or misfires, what then happens is the, the motor will continually run. And if it doesn't cause the string to disengage, the string will then wind around that, that pulley in the, bat, in the opposite direction. Because it's not looking for the load sensor at that point, it's looking for, um, it actually, no, what, what it then does is that the claw will come up, it will trigger this switch, and it will shut the motor off because it sees that the claw is now in the up position, but that confuses it. It doesn't know how to respond to that. So when you go to make the next play, let's see what happens. I think we have a bad switch. It wouldn't surprise me, but it's either a bad switch or a bad connection caused by a faulty cable. Either this one, or it could be the trolley cable. This is, or the car cable. This is the trolley cable, this is the car cable. I, th I think that's how they're uh, signified. Um, let's put real money in it this time. I have one credit. It's now taken that credit. Look at the squeaking wheel. I'm going to go for my prize. It says, yes, you may win that prize. You're welcome. i got to change that. <laughs> I'm losing money here. All right, so I've used my credits. I'm going to use or insert more. Here we go. Let's try the other coin back. I have my credit. Starts the game. Now, as long as this switch stays in the operating position, I want that multimeter. 
I want that multimeter. Here we go. Aww. Bam, bam, bam. All the switches worked. What really confuses it... Where's my other quarter? There it is. What really confuses the hell out of it is when... It didn't accept that quarter, so... Come on. I don't know if it times out or not. Oh, that's a nickel. Back in my day, nickels were gold. All right, I'm going for that multimeter. Actually, you know, let's go back for the plush toy. We had a we had a miss and a win, and then another miss. See, it won't let me lose. Bang, bang. Okay, so. Try that again. And what's happening is when I'm doing that, it's triggering the claw early and it's tangling itself up. Let's watch it time out. goes. Timer is working internally, it's just not displaying properly. By the way, I lubricated just about everything on that trolley and the car. It's running a little nicer. Not bad for a machine that's been sitting in a barn that I almost fried. So luckily I didn't cause any real damage. Now, what can happen here I can't believe it. Oh, almost got it. What can happen here is if this cable is worn out, it can actually cause some serious malfunctions. All right, I got three credits. Let's have a ball. I want that multimeter. Give me that multimeter. No, not today. Okay. There's my other credit. So the credits indicator is working beautifully. You know, this thing might be calibrated for heavier prizes. That's why the claw is so strong. And this game might not have the uh, win, lose, 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 win, lose, lose, lose uh, ability. This particular game might be controlled specifically by the claw's strength. Because I can't lose. I simply cannot lose. This thing will not let me lose. It's a fairly lightweight net. It lost that time. Okay, I'm out of credits. There's a test button. I want to see what that does. I want to see if it does anything. I pressed it. Gave me a free credit. does it do? Oh, it tests all the switches. That's right. In test mode, that's switch number 14. Number 13. Oh, sweet. Uh, the homing switch, switch number 11. That's the uh, return. Now we're going to try this one. Number 12. Ooh. 11 and 12 are, okay. Now it should be just 12. And this will help us, oh, this is great. This is actually exactly what I wanted. So I can hit that test button and, ooh, it didn't register that one. That would have been 11, maybe it did. Okay, all right, good. So it's all working. Okay, so now what we're going to do is hit it again. I think it'll get it out of test mode. Okay. Let's 
see here. That's pretty cool. That'll help us determine what switches are bad when the time comes. If that ever becomes a problem. But right now, it's working flawlessly. So, except for, of course, the second indicator not working, the countdown indicator. Right now, it's like, that was a miss of a shot. Okay. A couple of credits left, we'll use those up. Working just fine. This is set for like the highest countdown possible. Um, it doesn't usually give you that much time. I have turned the music off, by the way, so those of you who've gotten bored and fast-forwarded, that's why you don't hear any sound. <coughs> now that time, it uh, lost the cable somehow. Ain't that a peach? There it is. <laughs> okay, I found the problem. I did a deliberate test and I watched the mechanism as this happened. What happened was I decided to park it over top of this drop hole. Let's just call it the drop hole. Or the animal hole. Regardless. Alright. What happened was, because the crane or the, the claw had never bottomed out, it never released the load sensor or the load arm. And because it didn't release the load arm, the motor was free to continuously spin until the uh, cable popped off the, the roller, or the, the, the spool. That, my friends, is why I've been having so many problems. I took too much off. I should, I should not have cut down that string because just that little bit would have been enough to prevent that from happening. So what happened was when this and the on the odd chance that this didn't pop off the spool, it would continuously run <laughs> and it would start raveling up the other way. So I need to now replace this string with a new one. Yeah. Because of my own stupidity. Well, I just didn't really understand I guess how it worked. I'm thinking that the string was too long, and that's why it was bunching up. Learn as you go often works, but in this case, I think I caused myself more aggravation. I've uh, spoked the board, which I fixed. Luckily, it was just damaged land. Then I shortened the string too much, and now it won't release the load lever. Um, what else have I screwed up? No, that was pretty much it. But I learned a lot in the process, and that's what matters. I'll just, I'll, I'll tell myself that. Um, so, as of right now, I think I just need to replace this claw cable. And, um, I need a new, I need a new rope. <laughs> I cut it down too short. Um, so I could probably, this is nylon cord, I don't know where I can buy this. I'm going to try an arts and crafts supply store. I won't find one with this clever uh, clamped on clevis thing or whatever you want to call it. I won't find that, but I can always make one. <sighs> this has actually been quite fun. I'm, I'm very impressed that I've learned so much in uh, just a few short hours. Um, and the frogs have been monitoring my progress the whole time. Look at them, they're staring at my little disaster here. <laughs> but once I get the claw mechanism straightened out, working perfectly, then I'm going to start attacking the uh, cosmetics of the machine. I'm going to work on trying to bring life to this. Um, I'm going to take this coin mech out. I'm going to repaint the whole thing black. I'm going to find locks for this machine. I know I can get them from Betson or Elot. Elot. 
you good. Whatever. And then I'm going to start polishing up the, the anodized aluminum. I'm going to clean up the light display. I'm going to get some um, more fuses in case I blow any more. I'm going to um, actually hook up that light display. Right now I'm using the fuse from the light display to power the logic board and the fuse for the logic board is powering the crane mech. <laughs> oh man, I'm such a loser. But I think we've made some progress. I cleaned up the panels a little bit. This is on the inside, the, that mold that you see. I'm gonna have to take these panels off from the inside. I don't think they come off, but if I can figure out a way. I cleaned the back up as best I could. I might actually just put a coat of paint on this. You know, it's never going to look right. I'm going to probably paint this red because it's going to be exposed. I'm going to get some carpeting for the inside, some arcade, just a sample piece. I'm going to ask for a sample piece from a carpet place that size. <laughs> And I'm going to cut it down, and I'm going to put it in there. Or, you know, um, they actually sell the, um, although I probably won't get it in the color I want. If I can get black um, automobile, um, the rear decking, like by the rear window, they sell the, the thin carpet stuff that they use on those. They sell it in rolls. If I can get it in black, I can adhere it to the floor, and it actually look pretty decent. But, so far, we're making progress. I like progress. Until then, guys, stay tuned for more.